Today we're talking about the best selling cards under $5 or less is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Penny Stock Market Watch. If you are curious, I was on vacation. I went to a casino that was about two hours north of here on um, Monday. Um, and so I just kind of was on vacation the last couple of days. I just got back and we're doing this here and now. Um, so let's rock and roll. What is this? So Cyberstorm Access is doing its thing. It's out and about ready to rock and roll. Um, I have seen this card before. I haven't read it, but I, I, I've read it before. I just don't remember what it does. Um, for the rest of the duel, you apply one of these effects. You cannot activate monster's effect in the hand. Draw two instead of one for your normal draw. You can conduct two normal summons per turn, not just one. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Discard itself. Your opponent cannot activate monster's effects when you normal summon this turn. Um, so... This card, you know, the R word, right? Rogue, right? Like, that. this card is obviously, you know, because we look at the meta right now, um, Kastira, um, Pearly, Super Heavy Samurai, I, Pearly, cannot believe, uh, <laughs> Pearly, um, Sprite, Runic, not Runic as much, but definitely Sprite, a lot of hand traps, right? So you're not going to see a lot of meta decks playing this, but this does. This is kind of like the small world effect where it kind of allows Rogue to do well. And I always have this rule, and I mention this a lot when I talk about my deck profiles when it comes to Rogue. Um, and we see small world helps with this, where you either want to make your deck, your Rogue deck, go as fast as the meta or slow the meta down, right? And this in essence does both you're drawing two cards you're doing two normal summons and your opponent can't really respond to it now decks that would be able to take a, a huge amount of advantage on a second normal summon um not a lot really come to mind because decks like flow uh yosenju um, Constellers, Evil Swarm, you know, decks that, and, uh, and other decks that normal summon more than once per turn, they usually have their own effects that do that. Um, and then decks that, it, it really comes down to like decks that really actually rely on their normal summon a lot. Um, to where if it gets negated, they could be in a terrible spot. Like Sword Soul. For example, it feels like they might be able to get away with this. I believe the Tenny cards are not effects, so I think that could work. Um, I don't know. Uh, you guys let me know what your best use of this card has been. I haven't really play tested too much with it, um, but I know that when I first read the card too, I was like, this is a very interesting card. I think this is a scary but good buy. Um, the reason why I say it's scary is because there there might I can't think of anything off the top of my head where this card you add three copies of this card to a deck and it is just instantly tier two tier one you know type of deck, but um, there might be one out there. And when we saw Small World first came out, it was like ten dollars I believe at first, and it jumped up to like thirty. So this card has potential. Um, for sure, and um, that's why we see it as the number two best-selling card under five dollars in Yu-Gi-Oh! Penny Stock Market Watch. Um, Super Heavy Samurai Prod Prodigy Wakayushu, obviously. Ice Jade has a new card. This card becomes this card. What is this card? I don't know what this card is. Um, search. Web for ice. There's just so many archetypes. Is that the field spell? It is the field spell. Interesting. Um, when it's equipped with an equipped card, you can discard an ice shade or water monster. Okay. Especially summon this card from your hand. Uh, then you can summon a token. Except water monster. This is really good. This is really good. Um, not for Ice Ice Jade's terrible. But I meant like, Ice Jade's fine. I, Ice Jade is fine. They're not that good, but they're not terrible. I don't think it's a coincidence that it's level 7. Um, 
you know, incidental Mermail support is incidental. I don't know what Atlantean Mermail looks like, a 2023 Mermail list. If you guys have one, let me know. I haven't seen a Mermail Atlantean list in a minute. Obviously, Marinus come to mind as well um, because I think, I don't know, is the token thing going to be a problem for the Marinus cards? I'm not sure um, if I know how to spell Marinus. Um, and I do not know how to spell Marinus. Let's try this. Yes, the C comes right after. Okay. This is one level four lower Marinus. This is two Marinus. This is two water. Um, so it can be a token. This is two water. Um, one level four, two water, two plus water, two plus water, two plus water. So. This card, discarding a Marinus, summoning itself out, and making a Link to Marinus is pretty crazy if you think about it. And the fact that this card can be used with Atlantean Dragoons, uh, Atlantean Marksmen, Atlantean um, Infantry, Heavy Infantry, uh, and a lot of Mermil and Atlantean cards, and trigger their effects because I do believe that would trigger, yeah, it definitely triggers their effects with that. Um, is pretty solid. You, I really could see a lot of play with this. I just don't know if Ice Jade's really that great. Um, and I don't know if this card getting added to Marinus or Atlantean Mermail or like Ice Barrier or whatever, um, if it makes it great. It may make it good, but I don't know if it makes it great. Um, so there's that. Uh, but I think it's a good buy for sure because there's a lot of play, uh, fun play things you could do with that. And hey, Cyrus Sword Axis is coming out, so we're talking about that. Um, I'm curious to see if any other cards um, moved up because of Cyberstorm Access. It doesn't look like it so far. Um, you know, Mayor Maker we've seen before. Herald of the Abyss we've seen before. Uh, Danger Nessie is interesting. Why is this card making moves? Now, if I'm correct, I don't think this was in the... Yeah, it wasn't in the structure deck. Which was wild. What was missing? Um from the dark this was my big issue too with the dark world structure deck so it says first dead uh, yeah was that um it's literally eight dollars that's actually kind of cheap that's actually super cheap that feels like really good value but um danger to Sunoko, if i said that right thunderbird bigfoot mothman um but no nessie and Nessie's been out for five years. Like, it's not worth a structure deck reprint? Was that on purpose? Um, like, it must have been. Um, this card could be... This is a really good engine. Like, Dar Danger's been a really solid engine since it came out. That's why it's all over the ban list. Um, I think it's a great buy. And this is another card might be a target for a ban list and the reason why this card has made this market watch is because it just barely became a penny stock uh, maybe a reprint got announced i'm not sure uh, I, don't, I don't know why a bunch of these people are posting it for four dollars um but it is what it is i think it's a good buy i think the dangerous stuff is really good really solid um i haven't really found a deck that i enjoy playing that also includes the danger cards, but um, I know a lot of people um, do enjoy those cards. I think that's another good buy too. I, I know we're looking, waiting for me to say a card is a bad buy, but there's a lot of really good buys um, so far today. Um, we've kind of talked about these cards before. We can talk about sign and mining a little bit more in depth because, okay, there's not really a need to hit this card. Um, Mathmech is probably the best cyber stack. It's not that great. We were just talking about Marinus. It's not that great. Um, so I think, like, as far as a ban list is concerned, I think this card is safe. I will say, too, the lowest amount of listings is also a um, penny stock. Um, that is super on the rise right now. That is crazy. Um, it was at $5. It's being sold for $5. Another. This is, looks like a market correction being sold for four dollars i mean a lot of these are plus 99 cents shipping so it's really five dollars um this could be a really good because it is technically still a penny stock this could be a really good buy we have this person uh one punch collectible sitting at 12.95 
Um, I know that's not a penny stock, but the fact is, is that person had 20 copies. This person has 12 at seven dollars, um, and so this could very easily shoot up if you could get a play set of this for 15. I I pull the trigger. I it's one of the best cards, honestly, in the game. Sign up mining. It's not talked about very much how good of a card this is because Ash just dumpsters this card, right? You send a card from your hand to the graveyard. Go ahead and grab your level four or lower cybers monster. Your opponent plays Ash or uh, Farf has been really big on this card. Uh, you know, after you resolve it, your opponent plays Droll, right? It's really does lose to a lot of hand traps, but this is, you know, hand traps aside, this is one of the best cards in the game. It searches so many fantastic cards. I think it's another good buy, but. Um, you know, Cybers right now, like Math Mech, Salomon Gray. I know the Salomon Gray support just came out, um, or just got announced and just come out. Um, but it's not really like there's a Cyber deck that's doing a lot of things. Like uh, I know I've said a lot of the cards are good buys, but of the buy of the good buys so far, it's probably the worst one. Like Ness is better. Uh, just slip down. Um, time tearing uh, potentially, definitely a lot more potential. Um, I see two parallel exceeds. It's crazy. Um, the common from the Kearney code is the other version of parallel exceed not five dollars. There's three versions of parallel exceed. Oh, it's the OTS version. I wonder why, and I haven't gotten to the bottom of what exactly best selling means. Like, is this one of the cards that makes the most money, or is this card that has the most listings that are coming off the market? Right, because that's different. Like, if, like, if it's based off of how much money the card is making, it's like a dollar card that has ten versions of it sold would technically be better selling than a fifty cent card that had nineteen versions sold, right? But it would be worse selling than a twelve dollar card. Right, like I, I don't think that's the order that it goes in, but it might be. I don't know how it works, and I also don't know how often it refreshes. Every hour, every four, every day, I'm not sure. Um, but it is a best selling is a good parameter. But it is interesting that this is the worst selling parallel exceed, and it's the OTS version, and they're all about the same price. I believe this one is actually the second most expensive, with it being three dollars. Um, and this one is also three dollars right um, the common one is the cheapest one so that's probably why it's why it's not last but it's, it's just crazy because the OTS version is usually so good my guess is the prismatic secret rare is the nicest looking um, and, uh, and I've talked about this version of parallel Eat a lot um, but I'm really I'm not really here to talk about these two versions I'm really talking about this version like why the OTS? Because OTS, usual rule of thumb for the Yu-Gi-Oh! market is OTS version is the best version. But I think it's the worst for Parallel Exceed. Um, and I think the reason for that is that if you're going to buy Parallel Exceed, you just get the cheapest one or the nicest looking one. Um, and the OTS version is neither. Um, so that's why both of them are in the top 24, um, but the OTS version is not. Uh, which I find to be very interesting. Firewall Guardian. Get this card sent to the graveyard as link material for the link summon of a cyber monster. You, I'm not even going to pretend like I know what this card does. Uh, you can special summon this card uh, by banishing this field. When an attack is declared involving a link monster and an opponent's link monster, you can banish this card and negate the attack. And if you do, the original attack becomes zero. Also, it's, effects, it's unaffected by card effects, except its own. It's definitely the first effect. The fact that this is a level four uh, Cybers monster, um, dark Cybers monster, that brings itself back out, potentially, um, very very restrictive. Uh, that has to be some weird OCG combo with this card. Like there has to be. Like, I have to be missing something with this card because I don't see it. It just feels like what's the card? Dotscaper. Right? Am I thinking of the right card? Yeah. Like it feels like a worse version of Dotscaper. Because Dotscaper 
can be used on any type of monster. And for any summon. Like, I know it's level 1, so is that why? I don't know. I don't know. Um, if you guys have been watching this video, and you're like, man, he's just so positive today. He's only been saying the cards have been good buys. Well, we have found my first bad buy. Like, I'm not really quite sure what it is about this card. Because I know it's not the second effect. This is way too circumstantial for this to be a thing. It has to be in the graveyard. When an attack is involved with a Link monster versus another Link monster. Um, so it's not that. It's this. But there are so many cyber... Like specifically, like this is what cyber does. Like If you look at like you know um, spellcasters, they use a lot of spells in their deck. Like um, Witchcrafter and Dark Magician and Dark and uh, Magician Girl and uh, Fortune Fairy. Like they use a lot of spellcaster types in their deck. Dragons are usually a lot of like big monsters, like Borlo Salvis Dragon, Borlo Lend Dragon, like Borlo. And there's a new Link Five. with a Borlo card? I don't remember its name off the top of my head, but that's usually how dragons like to roll. Cybers is just spam, just like. Monster in the grave comes back out. Monster in the grave comes back out. Monster goes to the grave. Summon a token. Like it's 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 spam, and so I don't know why this card is a top twenty four selling card on the market, but maybe you do, and that makes you feel warm inside. I don't know. Um, like I always say, you know, just because I say to buy something doesn't mean it's a perfect buy. Um, even if I say it's a perfect buy, doesn't mean it is. Um, and if I say it's a bad buy, it doesn't mean it is, right? You spend your money how you feel. Um, don't let anybody tell you otherwise with that. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting because every other card we've seen, like the rescue stuff, uh, sword soul stuff, big wealth from Ra labyrinth, right? Even ice jade to an extent. We've seen a good amount of times the gold pride cards. Um, it's kind of crazy. Um, droll and lockbird is number one. Um, but we haven't seen this card, and I don't know why it made its appearance. Um, but let's talk about Droll real quick. Guys, I feel like I've talked about this card before. I made a video about, like, the worst good cards. Uh, and this definitely made the list. And like I said, Farf has been going on a lot about banning Droll. Um, there, Because there, here's the thing with a card like Droll. And Nibiru is the same way. There are cards like this. D-Shifter is similar where there are some decks that can play around it and some decks that just auto lose to it and you can make the same case for like maxi and vanity's emptiness like well flow under doesn't lose to maxi right like because they just normal summon all the time but for me with this card a lot of card a lot of decks don't like pearly kind of does super heavy samurai big time does um, Sprite Runic, not as much, kind of, not as much, Sprite really summons a lot, they don't really add that much, um, Naterio Runic, I don't believe so, um, Cash Tira to an extent, yes, uh, but if they opened well, it doesn't matter, um, and that's the thing too with Droll, like, if it, let's say a deck uses, uses a graveyard a lot, and your opponent plays D-Shifter, they just lose, Right, let's say your deck searches a lot, and your opponent plays droll. You would think you would just lose, but if your hand is good enough, you're fine. So I'm not really like I know it's a great card right now, but I don't like how many decks are main decking this card ever. Like how, this is not really a main decked card. Um, if you want, you can play main deck droll. You know, you do whatever you think is best for your deck. Um, and when we look at the all the versions of Droll and Lockbird, this one's my favorite, but it's not a penny stock. Uh, but it's because it's the alternate art. Um, and it's a gold rare. I love the gold rarities. Um, but we have the Strike Star Strike Blast version with 37 listings and 102 listings of this one. It's also the best selling one because this is just the budget one that everybody's getting. Um, and it is hitting the it is going to the moon. Um, you wish you would have bought it here. It's now at 443. It's probably calmed down a little bit. Yeah, it's at 249, $3. Um, I mean, this was it. This is crazy. Um, 
I don't think it's the greatest buy. I don't see it going up in value. I think this was probably the best time to buy it. it was like a month ago, um, or three months ago, or probably not six. I bet you, if we go back far enough, I was about to say if we go back far enough, because this is how droll works. Um, so this is just something. Basically, I was talking what I was talking about with this card. I just wanted to talk about how I felt about it because there are some people that are talking about it getting banned, right? I don't think it needs to be banned, but that was number one. Number two. This is just something to remember. Like, this curve is something to remember going forward. And even really for myself, like, I got to remember this. Like, the next time you see Droll and Lockbird at, like, a dollar, dollar fifty, buy it. Because it does this literally about once every year, year and a half. It just is, is really good in the format. And then it goes away, and, and it's not good in the format, and boom, it comes back. So, let me know what you guys think. What are the best selling cards under $5 or less that you like? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you guys click that like button to show your support for the channel. Subscribe for more content. But most importantly of all, have a good day.